I welcome you all to the session of thermal engineering basic and applied. Today, we shall discuss about the boilers. In fact, we have discussed several cycles which are used to describe all the processes in a steam powered plant and we have seen that all these processes can be mapped in different thermodynamic planes. Mapping all these processes in thermodynamic planes in particular P V and T S plane, we could establish the thermal efficiency of the cycle. Now, we have seen that thermal efficiency of the cycle is not only the efficiency which dictates the overall efficiency of the plant. So, you know if we try to find out what would be the overall efficiency of the plant, we also need to understand the performance of several, several other components along with several other efficiencies which are also important uh, to be looked at. So, now if we go to just uh, you know before I go to discuss about the classification of boilers, their working principle, let us first draw the you know schematic depiction of the plant. From there we shall try to understand why we need to specifically study about boilers. So, if we try to draw the uh, if we draw the schematic depiction of the plant. So, this is boiler very simple one that we have discussed several times. So, this is the most simple schematic de, you know, de, de, depiction of the steam power cycle or plant and what we can see from this depiction is that there are four, four major components boiler, turbine, condenser and pump. So, this B is used to uh, denote boiler. Similarly, we have several other components like turbine, condenser, pump. We have discussed all these, you know, uh, uh, this particular description of this particular uh, diagram. Now, what we would like to discuss today, we have discussed about thermal efficiency of the uh, cycle that is nothing but W out by Q in. Question is you know this is the thermal efficiency and by knowing only this thermal efficiency it is very difficult to predict what would be the overall efficiency of the plant. So, if we look at why I will discuss later. So, the overall efficiency of the plant
it is thermal efficiency into mechanical efficiency into generator efficiency into eta boiler. So, you can understand if we want to predict the overall efficiency of the plant, we also need to know three different other efficiency together with the thermal efficiency that we have already discussed. So, you know this mechanical effi thermal efficiency that we have studied and we have worked out numerical problems as well. So, this is the efficiency which is I mean which comes into the picture accounting for the you know uh, the efficiency of the turbine air pump. Because if you try to look at this is the amount of energy that we are going to add in the cycle and out of this input energy we are also getting some amount of energy in the form of work and this is basically if we look at this is though this is w out, but ideally it should be w net out. That means, this device is also taking or consuming some amount of work from this output work and as a result this w net is coming into the picture. So, now to, to, to take care of the efficiency of these two devices this thermal efficiency is coming into the picture. What about this mechanical efficiency? This is also another important efficiency you know perhaps you have studied in the context of you know pumps. So, you know that uh, the energy which we are which is being developed inside the turbine that energy is not available at the shaft of the turbine. So, some mechanical losses are there accounting for these mechanical losses we also need to define one efficiency that is mechanical efficiency. So, that means, the energy which we are getting. So, when steam is flowing through the turbine it does work on the rotating part of the turbine. So, energy is produced, but that energy is not available at the shaft of the turbine because of some mechanical losses and that is why this mechanical efficiency is coming into the picture. So, we have talked about the thermal efficiency, we have now discussed about mechanical efficiency as such we are I am discussing why because you should know why overall efficiency is important. Third is the generator, so efficiency of the generator you know that even though some amount of energy is available at the shaft of the turbine next this part. So, this shaft is also connected to the shaft of an alternator from there you are getting electricity. So, from this part onward you know so this is the common shaft and this shaft is also connected to the shaft of an alternator or generator. So, this is alternator right. So, the shaft which is the work which is available at the turbine shaft that work is not going to produce equal amount of electricity because some losses will be there. Perhaps you have studied when you have when you have studied about electric motor and etcetera. So, windage loss will be there. So, you know bearing loss will be there. So, accounting for all these losses this efficiency that is generator efficiency is coming into the picture. So, fine we have discussed about thermal efficiency, we have discussed about mechanical efficiency, we have discussed about generator efficiency, but in addition to all these three efficiencies we are also having another important efficiency that is boiler efficiency. So, it is equally important to be looked at while we are trying to predict the overall efficiency of the plant. Why? Because when someone is designing several components which should be placed in a thermal power plant even after incorporating all these devices in this all these components in a power plant we also need to calculate the overall efficiency. So, whoever is going to design the plant then I mean he or she must be 
considering the overall efficiency if he or she needs to calculate overall efficiency in addition all in addition to all these three efficiencies this is very important to be looked at so this is boiler efficiency now question is what is boiler efficiency see if you look at the schematic depiction what we can understand let us first draw the ts diagram then it will help us to understand exactly what we are going to discuss now so if we will draw the ts plane right so this is say this is the rankine cycle modified rankine cycle that is steam is separated beyond the saturated uh, state up to 3 so now question is if we look at the schematic diagram vis a vis the corresponding ts diagram what we can observe you know that we are supplying Q, Q in, so this is the amount of energy you are going to supply in the form of heat and that is coming by burning from the combustion of coal, if it is the coal fired boiler. If it is a diesel fired boiler, then this energy will coming from the combustion of diesel. So, whatever is the case, we are going to supply some amount of energy in the form of heat and at the cost of that input energy we are getting some amount of you know energy recovery. Why I am using the word recovery because you know the amount of energy that is being added to the boiler is not going to convert an equal amount of energy to increase the energy of the you know working substance that is you know allowed to go through the boiler. So, the amount of energy that is added to the boiler that energy would be utilized to conversion to convert water into steam there is no doubt about it but question is there must be some amount of leakage of energy in the inside the boiler so accounting for the heat loss from the boiler surface to the surroundings heat leakage all the energy which is supplied by either by burning coal or bar or by burning you know diesel or any other fuel it is very difficult to have equivalent conversion. So, that means, it is not the conversion of course, conversion I would like to say because this thermal energy is again going to increase the you know total energy of the steam. So, basically you know I, I should say internal energy of the steam. So, but since there will be losses of heat while it is added to the boiler some amount of heat will be you know transferred from the boiler surface to the surroundings some amount of heat leakage will be there and as a result of which the we will be getting some amount of energy recovery but it is not equal to the energy which is added it is because of this reason boiler efficiency is defined eta b that means, whenever we are get giving some energy inside the boiler, boiler is a mechanical device and the heat turn, heat is transferred to the boiler and using that heat water con water is converted into steam. So, this process you know is not completely reversible process. So, that you know the amount of energy that we are going to give to the boiler will be converted equally to increase the internal energy of the steam or working substance. Because you can understand you have studied there is heat transfer due to finite temperature difference. So, naturally process is highly irreversible and so long as the process is irreversible it is very difficult to have or it is very difficult to achieve 
maximum efficiency or maximum exergetic efficiency. So, this device will not run with the maximum exergetic efficiency and that means, the energy will be recovered that is 100 percent true, but this recovery is not fully. So, accounting for that we are have boiler efficiency. So, what is boiler efficiency you can understand now. So, this boiler efficiency eta b let me write here equal to so, while or when you are going to define any efficiency this is something like you know output energy to the input energy. So, what is the amount of heat what is the amount of energy added to the boiler that is a m dot fuel into calorific value of the fuel. So, this is mass flow rate of the fuel that fuel is burned and out of this out of the burning of the fuel that is combustion we are getting some amount of energy and that energy is nothing but m dot f m m dot f that is mass flow rate of fuel multiplied by the calorific value of the fuel. So, this is the calorific value of fuel and what is the output energy. Now, let us look at T s diagram as I told you you know in the pre in one of the previous classes we have discussed about that if we apply steady state steady flow equation you know to the process which is there inside the boiler. So, the process that is there inside the boiler is mapped in T s plane and we know this process is constant pressure heating. So, this constant pressure heat addition process and if we apply I mean if we consider the process is steady state steady flow process then by ignoring the changes in kinetic and potential energy. Let me tell you once again ignoring not the kinetic and potential energy rather the changes in kinetic and potential energy it is possible to write that amount of heat that is you know added to the working substance is nothing but m dot s into h 3 minus h 2. So, this is the amount of energy added to the working substance if we ignore if we apply the steady state steady flow equation to the process that is there in the boiler that is the constant pressure heat addition process and if we ignore the changes in kinetic, kinetic and potential energies then perhaps this is the amount of energy which is added to the working substance and that amount of energy is coming essentially from the energy which is being supplied to the boiler. But never these two quantities are equal otherwise it would be you know the you know it, 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 it will violate second law of thermodynamics. Because let me tell you because these two quantities will never be equal accounting for the process which is highly irreversible because there is heat transfer due to finite temperature difference and also some amount of heat losses or heat leakage will be there inside the boiler. So, this is what we are getting and the value of eta b will be always less than 1. So, this is what is known as boiler efficiency. So, now question is if we can understand that uh, this efficiency plays an important role towards the prediction of the overall efficiency of the plant. So, our target should be as I had mentioned few minutes back that these two quantities are not equal it is very difficult to achieve in practice that these two quantities will be equal, but our target should be to increase the quantity that is m dot s into h 3 minus h 2, where m dot s is the mass flow rate of steam. So, m dot s this is mass flow rate of steam and m dot f the mass flow rate of fuel right. So, our objective should be to increase this quantity we know rather knowingly we are trying that how closer this quantity will be equal to the 
m dot f into C v. If we need to do so, we also need to know several processes which are there inside the boiler, several components which are there inside the boiler. That means, we need to know the configuration of the boiler and by this time we have understood that this is the device which is again a heat interacting device. Heat transfer takes place from one stream to the other stream, right. What are the two different streams? One stream is steam water and other stream is hot flue gas, high temperature products of combustion. So, these two dif different streams are there inside the boiler and when these two different streams are you know flowing through the boiler, they exchange heat among themselves and we are getting steam from the water. So, that means, considering all these aspects, we have we can understand at least it is needed to look at several components which are there inside the boiler, several flow paths through which these two different streams flows a uh, flow to a uh, flow from one part to the other part of the boiler and the you know uh, mechanism by how we can maximize this quantity that is m dot s into s 3 minus h 2. So, that means, if you would like to summarize the objective behind this particular module of this course is to describe the working principle of the boiler, but before that we should understand what are the several components and what are the functionalities of the of several components. At least we have understood that boiler is a heat exchanger. So, inside the boiler two different streams are allowed to flow and while they are flowing they exchange heat and as a result of which we are getting steam from water. Now, today I will discuss about one type of boiler that is called Babcock and Wilcox boiler. right? Now, all of a sudden if I write that this is Babcock Wilcox boiler, then perhaps at least we need the it is better to discuss about the classification. So, depending on the configuration by how two different streams which we have identified one is hot flue gas other is steam water these two different streams are allowed to you know uh, pass inside the boiler, boiler is classified into two different categories. So, let me write over here boiler. So, classification you know major classification. So, major classification is based on the flow configuration of two different streams that is hot flue gas and steam water stream. So, the major classification is based on this particular aspect. Again a uh, little bit of fluid dynamics is coming into the picture, but it is uh, not there there is no scope to discuss about the hydrodynamics part of the boiler in this course, but at least we should know that uh, flow, flow configuration. So, hydrodynamics will play an important role while designing the boiler essentially to achieve maximum performance of the boiler, but that is beyond the scope of this course, but we could understand that the based on this classification boiler can be you know 
boilers can be or boiler can be placed into two categories one is known as fire tube boiler other group other class is water tube boiler okay so the babcock wilcox boiler that we are going to study today in fact i will discuss briefly that is essentially a uh, water tube boiler so babcock wilcox boiler is essentially a water tube boiler right i guess you have understood that based on the flow configuration of two different streams that is hot flue gas and steam water stream it is possible to classify boiler into two different categories one category is the water tube boiler another category is known as fire tube boiler so now you can understand from the name itself water tube boiler what 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 it you know indicates that water steam is allowed water or water steam is allowed to pass through the tube and you have studied about heat exchanger in your heat transfer course that this is a kind of cell and tube heat exchanger so if one stream is allowed to flow through the tube other stream will definitely pass through the cell that is over the tube so that is the concept we have studied in our heat exchanger i mean heat transfer course so this is water tube boiler you know so basically the name itself is suggesting that water will be allowed to flow through the tube and while one stream is going through the tube other stream has to pass through the cell and so that is the babcock wilcox boiler this is a water tube boiler now let us come to you know the schematic depiction of this particular type of boiler and you know that uh, this is the you know schematic depiction that is the cross sectional view you can understand there are several components i have labeled all those components not only that i have also described all these components in the right panel of this slide what you can see the the component is one components are 1 to 20 including 9 prime so this is 9 prime okay so you can understand that coal hopper coal damper, chain bread stalker, ash pit, baffle, stack, drum, down comer, down take header, water tubes, up take header, riser, dry pipe, convective superheater, radiant superheater, steam top valve, water level indicator, pressure gauge, safety valve, feed check valve. So, these three are very important. I will discuss in one of the you know in one class that there are two important you know uh, I can say uh, terminologies one is known as accessories other is mountings. So, the pressure gauge safety valve feed check valve this is you know these are common to all types of boiler you know. So, and lastly 9 prime that is blow down cock. So, this is blow down cock. So, if I write here, so this is blow down cock 9 prime. So, let us briefly discuss about all this right. So, first of all we need to identify what are the two different streams. We know that there are two different streams and these two different streams will be allowed to flow through the boiler using different configuration and that is how the you know classification we have discussed and the water tube boiler is the babcock wilcox boiler so this is let me write here so this is water tube boiler okay so what are the two different streams streams are one is steam water stream other is hot flue gas or 
it is also known as high temperature products of combustion. So, this is one stream and this is other stream, another stream right. So, let us briefly describe if we look at this part 1, 2, 3 and 4, it is a coal fired boiler what we can see coal hopper. So, basically you know coal is placed initially at the coal hopper that is at 1 and that coal is now dumped at 3. So, these you know that 3 and 4. So, there are two different pulleys through which this chain grade stocker moves continuously. So, as if there are two pulleys and chain is continuously moving like this right. So, what is done chain coal is taken to coal hopper from the hopper coal is dumped on the chain grade stocker. So, this is the chain grade stocker, chain grade stocker. So, basically we are stocking coal over the chain grate, chain grate you know that is a kind of perforated plates. So, if we look at the top view you will find like this. So, this is the chain and this is perforated plate chain is perforated that you have seen. Now, as if we are go st going to stock coal using coal hopper and damper on this chain grade stocker, this perforation is very important to have efficient combustion right. We need to have oxygen otherwise combustion will not sustain. So, when that chain grade stocker is moving from 3 towards the inner end that is the inner end of the chain grate entire combustion should be completed. So, that means, whoever is going to design this particular component or particular module of this boiler, he or she must be careful that whenever we are putting coal over here, the entire coal should be you know combusted within this short distance and that is the RPM of this chain grate stocker should be decided accordingly. And Entire, com entire coal would be combusted and whenever that product is coming over here, we will be getting residue that is S. So, that S will come into this S pit in this direction and that is shown by this arrow. So, S will be coming and will be stored in 4 that is S pit right. So, that is what we have it is shown. S is coming that is the residue and another thing is hot flue gas that is the high temperature product of com products of combustion. The high temperature products of combustion will flow towards the off. It is designed to direct the flow of high temperature products of combustion towards the upper part of the boiler. Otherwise, what will happen you know that the combustion, combustion products will flow in the horizontal direction it will go through the chimney to the surroundings without doing the task that is what is important in the context of this boiler operation. And that is why this baffle is given that is 5. So, the purpose of baffle is to provide a proper direction to the combustion products towards the upper part of the boiler right and also to prevent the movement of the combustion products towards the stack without doing the necessary conversion of energy ok. So, when the high temperature product products of combustion is moving towards the off you know that now we are coming to discuss about 7 that is drum it contains water, water from drum is coming through 8 that is down comer and coming to 9 that is called down take header and from the down take header water passes through the tubes 
that is shown by tents, there are three different tubes which are shown over here. So, that water will go or move through the tubes, while moving through the tubes, the conversion will start, that is water will be converted. In fact, water conversion of steam from water starts from nine itself. Being lighter than water, steam will flow towards the uh, uptake header that is 11 through pipes, so through water tubes. So, now when it is again moving through water tubes, all the water will be converted into steam and as I told you since water is well, steam is lighter, it will be there in 11. You, you can understand that 11 and 10 the or 12, these three different parts are very close to the high temperature part of the combustion chamber. So, this is the combustion chamber. Since 11 and 12, even 10, these three different parts of the boiler are very close to the high temperature part of the combustion chamber, wherein radiative heat transfer plays an important role. So, there are two different modes of heat transfer, one is flue gas convection, other is radiative heat transfer. Since part 11 is very close to the combustion chamber, wherein temperature is very high, so radiative heat transfer will play an important role that you have studied because of high temperature difference and the steam will move through the riser that is 12, steam is lighter and then it will be it will go at the top and it will be collected at uh, 13. Now, 13 is dry pipe because you know if dryness fraction is very poor, then even after allowing that steam through the convective and radiative superheaters. 14 is convective superheater, 15 is radiant superheater. The purpose of these two superheaters, if we go back, see in this TS diagram, we have tried to modify that is steam is superheated beyond the saturated line up to 3. So, if we need to superheat, steam should be allowed to this convective superheater and radi radiant superheater that is 14 and 15. These two superheaters are connected in series that I will discuss later. So, you know that if the you know quality of the steam is not very high, then even allowing the steam to even allowing steam to flow through these two superheaters, it is very difficult to get superheated steam at 16. That is why the 13 dry pipe is there. The purpose of the dry pipe is to increase the dryness fraction of the steam. So, the purpose of 13 is to increase the dryness fraction of steam before it enters into the superheater. Had this component not been there, steam will be directly taken to the radiative and convective superheaters. In that case, if the quality of the steam which is being produced inside the boiler is not very high, then even after allowing them through the superheater, it is very difficult to get superheated steam. So, only to make ensure that we are getting superheated steam, the dry pipe is there. And as I told you, the purpose of these two superheaters is to increase the quality of the steam and that is why they are placed almost at the middle of the boiler which are very close to the combustion chamber. And you know 15 is the radiative superheater because radiative heat transfer plays an important role very close to 11 and 15, while the right part of the right part of the boiler that is part 8 and 9 here convection takes place. So, this is flue gas convection. place. So, this is the place where flue gas convection becomes important and this is the place where radiative transport of heat, radiative heat transfer. So, basically you try to understand if we consider baffle as the dividing you know wall, left side of this baffle that is the 11, 10 and 12 where radiative heat transfer becomes important and dominating, while right part of this baffle that is 8, 9 and 9 prime in this zone of the boiler, flue gas, convex, flue gas convection plays an important role. So, this is flue gas convection is the dominating, dominating mode you know of heat transfer, fine. And then coming to the uh, 14, I mean we have understood about 16 because six, from 16 we take steam to the uh, turbine. And you know that uh, this is feed check valve because it is 
sometimes because of some losses we also need to supply water that is called make up water to the boiler drum because some amount of water will be you know lost to compensate that water that uh, water will not be water the water level will not fall below the below certain uh, point this this feed check line is connected. So, one is feed water pump is there and that feed water pump line is having feed check valve. The purpose of this feed check valve is not to allow this, this is relatively high temperature water not to flow back to the pump. So, the purpose of this feed check valve is to arrest back flow of hot water to the pump right. So, this is from the feed water pump. Okay. And 17 is the water level indicator as I told you that we also need we need to maintain a constant level of water in the drum. If water level falls steam will increase and steam pressure will increase that will that may rupture the cell. Not only that if water level falls high temperature part of the boiler like 11, 12 that will be exposed to steam. And the temperature of this of all these parts will be very high and that may break the uh, uh, total system. So, basically uh, cell wall will rupture that that high temperature will lead to generation of thermal crack. So, it, it is not desirable. So, 17 is the, the it is given that all to maintain always a particular level of water in the drum. 8 is pressure gauge definitely we need to maintain we need to measure pressure always for the purpose of the safety of the boiler, what is the pressure inside the boiler, whether pressure is increasing or not. If pressure increases drastically, then provision, provision must be there that some safety valve. So, by opening the safety valve, pressure should be released, otherwise it may start you know breaking of the entire system. So, that is why this safety valve is there. So, water level indicator, pressure gauge, safety valve all these three components are the are provided essentially from the safety operation of the boiler. Last is blow down cock 9 prime I have already discussed about feed check valve. Blow down cock is given you know that sometimes you know that water is coming from 8 and it is coming to 9. So, water is coming through 8 to 9 then water passes through the tube. So, if Normally, water which is supplied to the boiler that is uh, purified even after purification some impurities may there. So, that impurities may start sedimentation sometimes that need to be you know uh, taken out from the system otherwise it may reduce the heat transfer coefficient. So, that is why this blow down quark is there to remove the impurities which are stored in the pipe as well as in section 9. So, that heat transfer rate should not be affected. So, if we summarize there is steam water cycle. So, steam water cycle if I write 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 that is steam water cycle. And what else? This you know four, then five, then six. This is hot flue gas cycle. Right. So this is the hot flue gas cycle and this is steam water cycle these two cycles these two streams are allowed to flow in such a way that it is possible to have maximum heat recovery from the high temperature products of combustion. I would like to discuss one important thing since water is allowed to pass through the tube by increasing the length of the tube it is possible to have superheated steam because as I told you that steam conversion starts from 9 itself. So, when steam is coming at 11, it is not in contact to the water and that too the part 11, 10 and 12 these three parts are close to the high temperature zone of the combustion chamber as a result of which 
though there is small amount of water that water will be converted into steam. So, allowing water through the tube it is possible to have superheated steam at the exit of the boiler, but for that we need to increase the tube length drastically. Sometimes it no it it, 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 it becomes difficult considering the space requirement and that is why we are going to get good quality steam even at the exit of 12, but it is taken through the superheaters to ensure that the steam at the exit of the boiler will be superheated. Second point, since water since steam is passing through the tube, uh, water is passing through the tube wherein steam is generated and steam pressure is very high, steam is generated at a high pressure per kg of water supply 40 to 50 kg steam is generated. Right? So, for high pressure tube is good enough to withstand that high pressure instead of cell. So, had the case been like this that water is passing through the cell and flue gas is passing through the tube that is the fire tube boiler that we will discuss later. In that case cell has to withstand that high pressure. So, <coughs> the flow path of the steam flow configuration of steam should be withstand should be able to withstand that high pressure and so thickness of that particular component should be designed accordingly. <coughs> Since steam is passing through tube small tube diameter very less, so it can withstand high pressure and this is why this water tube boiler or Babcock Wilcock boiler is suitable for high pressure you know system. So, uh, it is it is not uh, because only reason is steam is passing through the tube and tube can withstand high pressure easily and that is why this type of boiler this type of boiler is much more suited for the high pressure operation. Okay. So, to summarize today's class we had started our discussion from the basic of this particular you know uh, cycle steam power cycle and we have discussed why boiler efficiency is so important. From there we have understood that it is essential to, essential to understand different uh, you know streams flow of different streams inside the boiler and why because if we understand the flow path of different streams of the boiler then we can also modify the design. The entire objective should be to increase the boiler efficiency which in turn will increase the overall efficiency of the plant. So, with this I stop here today and in the next class we shall discuss about the fire tube boiler. Thank you. Mm -hmm.